throughout the duration of the seminar. And if you have questions, please type them into the chat box in the control panel. Questions will be addressed at the end of the seminar. And now we have a special message from the current ASC President Jean-Louis Briard. My name is Jean-Louis Briot, and I'm president of the American Society of Civil Engineers. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to address you. As a professor, I know it's been a tough year for students, but I'm also certain that your resilience will serve you well as you solve tough engineering problems throughout your career. Already, your involvement with your ASC student chapter and your participation in this conference sets you apart from other students. Soon, you're going to graduate with a civil engineering degree, and I hope you will join us as an ASC professional member upon graduation. In life, we have two main families, the family that raises us and our professional family. As civil engineers, ASCE is our professional family. My membership in ASCE has been one of the most rewarding things in my life. There are many reasons for this, and I will share just a few. Number one, networking power and making connection with civil engineers around the world. This is the most important one because it leads to having the support of many civil engineers to solve your civil engineering problems, including meeting clients, and obtaining projects for your company. It's like being on a team with 150,000 players with each one of them willing to help you. After all, a family grows stronger together than apart. Number two, making professional friends. Some of those networking connections may turn into friendships which will last a lifetime. I play tennis with about a dozen friends. We battle pretty intensely on the tennis court, but we're good friends afterwards. But most of my closest friends are the friends I have made through ASCE activities. Number three, getting a job. ASC membership can help you with that too. ASC offers online career resources, as well as countless opportunity to gain leadership experience by serving on committees and getting involved in ASC programs. You can use our salary calculator to estimate your starting salary or negotiate a raise. By the way, when you're interviewing, ask if your potential employer will cover your ASC dues and support your ASC participation. You have a good chance to land this benefit and it sets you apart as someone dedicated to ongoing professional development and leadership. Number four, join a group or get involved on the committee ASC is everywhere. If you move to a new location, join your local ASC younger member group. You'll have an instant professional network of like-minded friends. Also, think about joining an ASC committee. That's what sold me on ASC. When I was a young professional, I joined, and next thing I knew, I was sitting next to top experts in the country, people that wrote the textbook I had studied from. This was so exciting. I was soaking in every word they said. I loved every minute of the committee work. Number five, member resources. Check, check out ASC Career by Design, Mentor Mat, Career Connection, and Student Resources. We have a program to help you refinance your student loans at a discounted rate. And we offer free and discounted PE review resources to members. Student members also receive the latter newsletter 10 times a year, and following graduation, you will receive ASC's world-class tools and resources, including ASC Plot Points, ASC Collaborate, This Week in Washington, Civil Engineering Source, Civil Engineering Magazine, and Institute and Section Newsletters. Number six, making a difference in the world. AC impacts many real-world problems through sustainability, resilience, diversity, and more. 
Getting involved means being part of a change you wish to see in not just civil engineering, but in infrastructure, legislation, construction standard, and so much more. Number seven, that sounds great, but what does it cost? Professional <laughs> dues are $245 a, a year. But like your family, your professional family wants to support you while you're building a solid foundation for your future. So if you're already a student member, your first year of professional dues is free. After that, your dues will be 50% of professional dues until you're 28 years old. Already, you can see that membership will pay for itself. And just like your family, the key to taking your place in our professional family of civil engineers is to stay in touch. Be sure we have a permanent email and permanent address so we can send you your welcome kit after graduation. I hope you will join our professional family upon graduation, and I can assure you that I will do my best to help you. I send all of you my best wishes of success in your career. Take care. Awesome. So next we have a quick message from 2021 Student Symposium Champion Sponsor, LJA Engineering. Getting that set up. Do we want to come back to this part? Oh, no, she's got it. <laughs> Little lag. It's causing a delay. No, I got it. Everything in life is a negotiation. Okay, so while our presenter um, gets her screen put up, I'll go ahead and introduce her. 
Um, I am pleased to introduce our keynote speaker, Annalie Martinez Gonzalez, a graduate engineer with MWM Design Group. Annalie designs water, wastewater, and storm infrastructure for municipal projects and private projects with MWM. She also participates in the Office Fund Committee, which works to make the nine to five life more enjoyable <clears throat> for employees of all levels. She is currently the Central Region Chair for ASE's Committee on Younger Members on the global level. She manages social media, press releases, and photography and videography of programming. In her spare time, Anali runs a lifestyle blog called The Nueva Latina with over 5,000 readers a month. Anali enjoys time with her husband, pups, friends, and family on the weekends, and she loves to work out, read, and write. With that, I give you our keynote speaker. <laughs> Yay, okay. Hi, everybody. Um, first, thank you all for being here today. It is such an honor to be here in front of you all, and I am excited to share my passion for civil engineering and ASCE today. I'd like to first take an opportunity to recognize all the ASCE leaders who have joined us on the call today. Thank you all for your continued support of the ASCE Texas section and of all these students that are here for the symposium. It's always so inspiring when I join events related to ASCE and this ASCE Texas section student symposium is no exception. You are all the future of civil engineering in this great state of Texas. And I hope that this entire weekend serves as a reminder to you all how, of how special, important, and especially how fun ASCE can really be. I have been an active member of ASCE now for nine years. And I often wonder how I got here. I wanted to elaborate on my story to give a comprehensive view of my level of involvement with ASCE and why I stay involved. The American Society of Civil Engineers is one of my main organizations and passions. ASCE is an organization that brings civil engineers together and that advocates for the profession. My favorite thing about ASCE is all the connections I have formed with amazing people who motivate me and inspire me every day to be a better person and to be a better civil engineer. I can't even begin to find the words to thank the ASCE Austin branch, um, the Austin YMF, the Texas section and the ASCE Committee on Younger Members for getting me involved and showing me that being a civil engineer means really making a difference in the world. Being involved in ASCE as a younger member has helped me become prouder and more confident in the work that I do each and every day. I have always understood the power of community since a very young age. I grew up in a small Texas town on the Mexico and Texas border called Del Rio, Texas. If you ever meet someone from Del Rio, you will see how much we are really all for one and one for all. Both my parents immigrated to the United States from Mexico when my mom was, I think she was 13 and my dad was in his 30s. We lived in San Antonio until I was five and that is when we moved to Del Rio. Growing up, I saw how involved my parents were in our small community. We were always going to different events with them or hear them talk about what happened at the luncheons they would attend. I knew that this was something that was important to them and I wanted it to be important for me someday too. I didn't always wanna be an engineer. Up until I was 10, all I really wanted to be was a princess. And some of you might laugh, but I'm serious. I soon discovered that being a princess was actually a lot of work. So I decided to start exploring other options. When I was 11, I started a zine. It's basically a mini magazine that I would produce and write myself. I would print out multiple copies on our family printer and hand out the zine to my family and friends. That day that I designed my first zine, I decided that I wanted to be a writer when I grew up. Of course, life is not always going to go your way and your plans will not always end up turning out the way you want them. 
everything changed for me when I turned 14. My dad is a civil engineer and a surveyor. I never really asked my parents about what they did up until that point in my life. My dad asked me if I wanted to go with him to the office and learn about what he did for a living. He started me out on the field with the surveyors and surprise, surprise, I hated it. <laughs> it was summer in Texas and I just could not. I dreaded summers after that because I knew that it meant that me and my brother had to go into work with my dad. The summer I was 16, my dad moved me into the office to learn and help with his civil engineering projects. That's when I started to discover my passion for engineering. I had decided to graduate high school as a junior, so I started applying for early admission that fall. It was never a question if I was going to college with my family. It was some, just something that was assumed and expected of me my whole life. My parents were both, you know, immigrated from Mexico and I was a first generation Mexican American. And going to college was something that was really important to me and to them. But we never really talked about schools. I didn't really have a dream school and I hadn't really decided what I wanted to major in. My parents decided to take me to a few schools to get a feel for where I wanted to go. We visited SMU in Dallas, UTSA in San Antonio, U of H in Houston, and a and And I just didn't see myself at any of those schools. When I walked onto the University of Texas at Austin campus, I was sold. I knew this is where I wanted to be. We did a tour of the engineering school and we sat through a presentation that displayed all the different majors that were offered at UT. Every slide was kind of the same, you know, showing different types of engineers, what they did, and nothing about them really stood out to me. Then a slide came up of a man in a wig playing the guitar with the title that said civil engineering. I had found my type of people. Civil engineers were the fun and cool engineers at UT, and I wanted to be one too. Unlike all of you, I wasn't involved in ASCE in college. Of course, I did go to a few meetings once in a while because free food, <laughs> but I ended up finding ASCE after I graduated. Or should I say that ASCE found me? My first year in college was one of the hardest years of my life. I was 17, first generation in America, you know, in the United States going to college. And I didn't really know what was going on that first semester. I felt like I had not, not that I didn't have a support system, but I just didn't know where to turn to when I needed help for, you know, schoolwork or if I was getting stressed with school. There was so many times I wanted to give up. My first semester, I failed all my classes but one, and I was put on academic probation. I went home for winter break, and my parents considered making me come back home for the remainder of the year. I convinced myself and them with a PowerPoint presentation that I needed to go back to UT and complete my degree in civil engineering. I was going to be a civil engineer one day, and I promised myself that. Thankfully, with the help of many people, many friends, many mentors, and with the help of UT, ultimately, I did end up graduating from UT with my BS in civil engineering in May 2012. I started my first big girl job in July 2012 at a firm called Clots Associates. The very first week of my job, my supervisor came up to me and another new hire and told us that we had lunch plans that Tuesday. I wasn't really sure what that meant, but all I heard was that lunch was paid for. I think you're starting to pick up on a theme now that I really like me some free food. So I was sold. The next day, a bunch of us from our office packed into a car and headed to my very first ASCE luncheon. I knew what ASCE was, but I didn't fully understand it. I met so many people at the luncheon that day and I was introduced to the Austin YMF or Younger Member Forum. 
The younger members of ASCE are engineers in the society who are 35 years old and younger. There are over 150 official younger member groups or YMGs within ASCE and each one is unique. YMGs are very similar to student chapters because each one operates independently and they facilitate similar types of activities focusing on leadership training, networking, technical development, and social events. At my very first ASCE luncheon, I was introduced to two engineers who were very influ influential to me in my career, Lindsay O'Leary and Joe Gosling. They were very excited about the possibility of me becoming involved in the Austin YMF. And pretty soon I was roped in to my very first role in ASCE as Austin YMF secretary. ASCE officially became a part of my life on that day in October, 2012. My favorite part about being involved with ASCE was that it made me feel like I belonged in civil engineering. Like I mentioned before, the struggle to where I am today was very real. I felt like I barely made it through school. And when I started my first job, I felt like I had no clue what I was doing. I had taken my FE exam in October, 2012, and I failed it. Being involved in ASCE, I was able to see how important our work is as civil engineers in our communities. Learning that motivated me to keep trying and I eventually passed the FE exam. It wasn't only the organization as a whole that helped me get through my first few years in the workforce, but also the people. Through ASCE, I was meeting and connecting with so many people that became mentors, friends, and family. The National Society also provides formal training opportunities for younger members across the nation. And these seminars focus on professional development and leadership training, and they are made specifically for younger members. The most notable of these programs is the Younger Member Leadership Symposium, or YMLS, the Younger Member Program at the Legislative Fly-In, and the Multi-Regional Leadership Conferences. In the summer of 2016, I was asked if I would like to attend YMLS or the Younger Member Leadership Symposium on behalf of the Austin YMF. I didn't really know what to expect, but I did know that I would be flying out to ASC headquarters in Reston, Virginia for a weekend of personal and leadership development. The Younger Member Leadership Symposium is a three-day experiential leadership workshop open to all ASCE Younger Members. The YMLS is hosted by the ASCE Committee on Younger Members and focuses on early career professional skills development to help ASCE Younger Members succeed and lead in the workplace. Tours and special events during the weekend offer additional networking with peers from all over the country. That weekend really changed everything for me moving forward in our profession. I had met so many people like me who had their own failures and struggles. People like me who didn't feel like they fit into the profession. People like me who wanted to make a difference. We all left from that weekend excited to get back to work because through the program, we learned that being civil engineers really means that we are creators of our whole world. Without us, the world wouldn't be what we know it to be. I moved my way up through the ranks in Austin YMF. I was director now, and I didn't know how involved I wanted to be in the future. I decided to take some time off from being involved in ASCE so I can explore my other passions. I took a year off and started my blog, The Nueva Latina. I started to write about my experiences as a first generation Latina living in the United States. Through everything I had learned and gained from ASCE up until that point, I was able to start my blog and grow it into what it is today. One day I decided I wanted to write a blog post about engineers and politics. I have always been interested in politics. I even interned with a Texas state senator during college. I was very surprised to learn 
that not many civil engineers are in politics and that many of the people making the decisions about infrastructure have never even designed infrastructure. I went into a deep rabbit hole on Google and tell me why I landed back on the ASCE website. Just when I thought I was getting out, they pulled me right back in. Every spring, ASCE holds its legislative fly-in program in Washington, DC, an intensive two-day program that provides participants with an inside look at the public policy process and it gives us an opportunity to interact directly with Capitol Hill staff from our districts. I attended my first legislative fly-in in March 2017. I decided that I would create a Facebook page so that all the younger members attending the fly-in could connect. This wasn't something that existed at the time, so I took it upon myself to make one. I soon started meeting and talking with other ASCE members from all over the country in the weeks leading up to the flying. When I arrived in DC, I was one of the last ones to arrive and all the younger members were out to dinner. I messaged the Facebook group and headed out to meet up with the group. I had never met any of these people in my whole entire life, but I walked into that room and it was like I had known every single one of them for my entire life. We all wanted to better the civil engineering profession and ASCE brought us together in that moment to help and do that. I connected with a smaller group during the fly-in and we stayed in touch. I got married in November, 2017, and I decided that I would invite these ASCE buddies that I had made at the legislative fly-in to my wedding. I wasn't really sure if they would even come. And to my surprise, they RSVP. They flew into San Antonio and made the two and a half hour drive to Southwest to Del Rio, Texas. These people who I had just met that year were coming to my wedding. ASCE has become such a big part of my life without me even realizing it. After the wedding, one of my ASCE friends, Elizabeth Ruedas, asked me if I had ever considered serving in ASCE leadership at a national level. Up until that point, I hadn't, but I told her that I was interested in learning more. The ASCE Committee on Younger Members, or CYM, is a national committee made up of seven voting board members and additional corresponding members. The committee oversees many younger member activities within ASCE, including younger member councils, younger member programs, younger member webinars, younger member awards and recognitions, student engagement and transition, and just general support for all younger members within ASCE. It really felt like my ASCE journey had come full circle because CYM was in charge of organizing the very first ASCE national event I attended after I started working, which is YMLS. I accepted a position on the ASCE CYM in October 2018 for a three-year term. I had somehow become a social media expert through the work I did on my blog, so I was asked to take on social media for CYM as visibility chair. Being on CYM the past three years has taught me so much about ASCE how it works and what we do as an organization to further the civil engineering profession. The connections I made through CYM are more than just professional. I have really found a family within civil engineering that I know that I can go to whenever I need it. Through CYM, I have led multiple social media and marketing campaigns for ASCE and helped in developing programming for younger members and student members. I have been given the opportunity to lead sessions all around the country on communication styles, social media marketing for civil engineers, and personal branding. The ultimate bonus of my involvement with CYN has been the opportunity to travel and visit places I would have never imagined. I have traveled to Reston, DC, Denver, Miami, Chicago, Detroit, Philly, and so many more places 
because of my continued involvement with ASCE at a national level. Even though this past year we were not able to travel to meet in person, I look forward to the day when we can all travel again for ASCE meetings, conferences, and events. The hashtag ASCE made me is a hashtag that was started by a really good friend of mine, Joffer from Las Vegas. Joffer's story of the hashtag really embodies my feelings about the positive effects that ASCE can have on your professional and personal growth. It began when he received a phone call from an unknown number offering him a job because of his involvement with ASCE in college. When he received his first job offer, he posted it on social media and included the hashtag ASCE made me. He doesn't know why he included the hashtag, but it just felt right. It was something that he could attest to because he always felt like he wasn't the smartest kid in the room in any of his classes. And he was always pretty shy before he got involved with ASCE. But after getting involved with ASCE and graduating, he was able to get a job all because he was a member of this prestigious international organization. And that all kind of plays a part into how ASCE has shaped not only his career, but so many of us on the call here today. ASCE made me means that ASCE has helped me get to where I am today. I have become more confident through leadership opportunities provided through ASCE. I have become more knowledgeable because ASCE gives us the opportunity to keep learning long after college is over. It means growing as professionals together to make the civil engineering profession better each and every day. After sitting back and thinking about all of the things I have done, the places I have traveled, the people I have met, and the members I have helped, I couldn't imagine a better use of my free time. I truly think I'm a more skilled and resilient person after devoting nine years of my life to ASCE. ASCE has given me so much, and I sit here before you all today to tell you my ASCE story, but also to give back to an organization that has helped me become the civil engineer I am today. I hope my story has motivated all of you to continue in ASCE after college and to get more involved in all the opportunities that ASCE has to offer. My name is Anali Martinez Gonzalez. I am a graduate engineer at MWM Design Group and ASCE made me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anali. Um, we did have one question come in. Um, and asking who did you pitch to when you wanted to change the civil infrastructure in politics? So um, I think there was a picture, let me go back. Um, so we actually got to meet with Ted Cruz. Um, I think, yeah, it's right there. I don't know if, if you can see that, um, but we were actually really surprised that um, he even showed up. So it was kind of scary since it was my first legislative flying. Um, the ASCE programming does a really good job of preparing you for that meeting, right? Um, they give you all the tools that you need, um, any information that you might want to share with your representatives. But usually you're meeting with um, staff or, you know, like their assistants, people who work with the, you know, senators and congressmen. And so when Ted Cruz walked in, we were all kind of um, surprised and um, but also excited because we actually were given the opportunity to tell our um, representative directly about what we wanted them um, to do about infrastructure um, and how he could you know, help civil engineers um, in the future. So that was just kind of neat um, that, that you know, I got to experience that because of ASCE. No, that's awesome. I know I personally have um, always wanted to participate in one of the fly-ins, so I'm very jealous that you've gotten to do that. Um, one question I had for you, um, you said you wanted to be a princess growing up. Which one? It's, this is why it's, I guess it's so difficult for me 
I think so. I think um, at let me see. I think I was wearing an Ariel sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I I love Ariel from Little Mermaid. Um, I think she was my first um, favorite princess. Not only did she sing, um, but she was just overall really beautiful, and she had a really good soul. And so I, that really touched me, you know, at that time. Um, she was just a really nice princess. So I would say Ariel, but now that I'm older, if I could go back, um, I think I would want to be um, Belle from Beauty and the Beast. I, I love her too. <laughs> now we just need a scientist engineer princess and maybe um, we can all strive to achieve that. Okay. So I'm not seeing any other questions come in. Um, I guess with that, um, thank you all for joining us today. Hopefully you had a good lunch while enjoying Annalise's presentation. And um, we'll be seeing you here soon for the next seminar at one o'clock. Thank you, everyone. I'm now going to stop recording. <laughs>